So last year, there was a fascinating situation. So over the summer of uh, 2018, Patrick Berglund gets – he's a piece in the trade that brings Ryan O'Reilly to the St. Louis Blues from the Buffalo Sabres. And, you know, eventually the Blues would go on to win the Cup. Berglund was there for a long time. He loved the, loved the city, loved the players that he played with, loved everything about the city. But apparently there was a situation where his agent – now, I'm just going at the, at, at, at the time of this trade. His agent did not send in his no-trade clause, which is 20 teams that he could not <clears> be traded <throat> to. Buffalo was going to be one of those teams. Now – he ends up playing on the fourth line there. Things are going well. Remember, Buffalo, it was good for a little bit there. They had that 10-game winning streak. Then they were the worst team in the league for the rest of the year. And he's not happy about it. Because, of course, he got traded to a team. You know, he didn't want to go. He's loved, for Not for the first time, we hear that somebody who played in Buffalo has lost their love of the game. And yeah, but that's, it wasn't a Buffalo issue. It was quite I, clear. I, I know, but I just want to, I just think it's really funny that the second player in Buffalo, what's happened to him. So then he, they end up terminating his contract and he disappears for like seven months until he ends up playing in Sweden again. He's the captain of one of the, like, the Swedish top leagues or whatever. So Sportsnet's Chris Johnson, CJ, great guy, decide, you know, he ends up doing this fantastic story for Sportsnet. It airs yesterday. First, it was, it was really weird. It was on YouTube. Earlier in the day, then they took it down to play it on the hockey night, which you know, was weird. And he does this amazing sit-down interview with uh, with Patrick Berglund and all this, going into the stories of it. And then there's some shenanigans that comes out that Elliot Friedman talks about that no Berglund's agent asked him for the trade list and, and verbally and over the paper, and Berglund never gave it to him. But then Berglund's still saying no, like the agent messed it up, and all the shenanigans, and he's. Thinking about an NHL return, and you're just, it's it's still weird to me, Alex. And we're gonna go like more in depth in this now. That he walked away from eleven million dollars, just like that. I it, that is a, a a that changes your grandchildren's life. Does eleven million dollars? I don't think it does with him. This this story is so much it's bigger than for him it was bigger than hockey it was more than just hockey right he got traded from st louis and he got traded to buffalo which he did not want to get traded to and that affected him from july from july 2nd to december what whenever his contract was terminated It wasn't that he got traded to Bu – it's not that it was Buffalo that was the problem. The problem started on July 2nd when he was traded. I – from his perspective, I fully understand what he did. And I get walking away from $11 million is a huge – is a huge thing. But he was just not happy – at all from what I get from what I'm getting from the 10 minute piece that uh, CJ did it did not seem like he was happy at all so he went back to Sw Sweden I don't see it as big as a concern as I get I don't know it seems like you see it as a concern or no sorry say that again you cut out over Sky. do you see it do you see what he did as a concern it's just uh, Alex. Well, so he ended up his contract ended up being terminated on December fifteenth. All right, and and uh, it's just I can't get over that. I I there like this the whole stuff with the the no trade clause. And does this happen, Alex? If Buffalo aren't complete garbage. I know he said yes. It yes, it uh, it was quite obvious it wasn't. That was taped in August. I don't know about that. Winning does a lot, Alex. That it was taped in August. Was as that in, not taped? Was in like August 2019. Yeah. Yeah, that's a year after the trade. Like, uh, dude. 
There was obviously bad relations there. I don't think he, it has to do with Buffalo. There was I I even if it's not the number one reason, I can't see how it's not. There was obviously bad relationship there because at first there was a, the games he had missed towards the end was was said to be an illness, but then Phil Housley said, "Let's be honest, it's not that." It's hilarious to me that in the interview that CJ did, Jack Eichel said he didn't even know or claimed to not know what was going on, but Oscar Sundquist and William Carlson, who played for different teams, knew that there was something up. When was I Oscar When was Oscar Sundquist traded? When was they're Swedish? When was Oscar Sundquist traded to St. Louis? I thought they signed him from Pittsburgh. Or signed him. When was he brought in? I want. I'm looking up hockey DB right now. It says his first time with the Blues was 17-18. So Berglund was still there. Yes. No? Okay, so that's why Oscar Sundquist knows. William Carlson is Swedish, and that's the only thing I can think of. They must have known each other from before. Yeah, but Jack Eichel is the captain of your team. Again, he was quiet. He said that it was – was that not made – like did they not say that in the interview? He kept to himself. Oh, himself said yes. Right. So if he kept to himself, how is Jack Eichel going to know? Because that's your leader, dude. That's your franchise. You're telling me Ovechkin doesn't keep or Crosby doesn't – or Shea Weber – John Tavares, so whose problem? Gonna, so whose problem is that? Problem. What? Whose problem is that? That Jack Eichel didn't know. I think it's more than just Jack Eichel's problem. That's the entire Buffalo Sabres organization. How did you miss such a problem where a guy left a million, a million, eleven million dollars on the table, Alex? There's something more here than just him being unhappy. And I, I cannot believe it's not something to do with Buffalo. I can't. It's not a coincidence that Ryan O'Reilly went to – remember, this is – Ryan O'Reilly is the guy who once won a Lady Bing trophy, had one minor penalty one year, only for having a broken stick, not long after has the toe tip orange incident, loses his love of the game in Buffalo, then goes all of a sudden to St. Louis and is the goddamn Conn Smythe trophy winner. There is, you can't tell me that, that there's not some giant part of this to do with Buffalo. I can't. I'm not it. saying that. All I'm saying is this major problem started way before he even arrived in Buffalo. Before he stepped foot in Buffalo, the problem started before that. I need to Did ask it, you this, Alex. Do you, who do you think messed up? Was it Berglund or his agent? Because they're pointing fingers at each other. And I find it very interesting that he seems to have the same agent. Well, it's the same thing as as what we were talking about before with Ron Francis and Peter Karmanov. I, I don't know. Like, there, it's hard for me to just make make a conclusion because I don't know all the facts. We know that we know that um, Berglund said that his agent didn't hand in the list, and then we have his agent saying that. We he didn't even get a list, so I, I can't make a a decision because I don't know. I know barely. It seems like I know none of the facts except what's being told to me. But if 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 you have somebody, if you're claiming your agent didn't hand in your list, and that is the start of a process that where you lose eleven mil, you leave the league. You know, a, a league that you've worked your entire life to get to. Why would you not hold on to that? Sorry, why would you hold on to that age? I have no idea. It it feels like there's still something missing. I find it hard to believe that they'd go through all this work to make this video, to make this piece for Patrick Berglin and. Not just that, but Patrick Berglund to just completely make up this story in a, in in what this hockey culture is trying to change to. I find, if that's the case that Patrick Ber that the the case here is that he didn't want to be in Buffalo, but he's making it out to seem that it's it's because of the whole trade from St. Louis and the whole agent situation. I find that that would be a whole different level of disturbing because. Look at what we're trying to move towards. 
with players being open, with with players uh, telling telling the. P- with players telling the PA what's going on, with players telling management with of what's going on. Like, look at what the PA just did when it comes to when it comes to the Bill Peters situation and the Babcock situation. They fully said you you should tell us what is going on. So something like this, if he's just making this all up or he's hyping it up, that's a whole different level of disturbing. I feel like, sure, maybe he didn't necessarily – like, it's quite obvious he didn't want to be in Buffalo from the start. That's why he was on the – that's why they were on the 20-team list. But I don't think he goes through all this to hype up a minor reason. I, I – what – is there any more else we need to say about this situation? Because I don't think we're going to agree here. But I, I think one thing we can agree with. Uh, shout out to Chris Johnson. Because uh, this was, I think the moment this situation happened, it was probably one of the biggest what the hell is going on. Somebody needs to find out what's happening here. And Chris Johnston, to his credit, has done has done it. Yeah. But I don't, so I don't get what we disagree on. Are you saying that Buffalo is the full reason or the sole or a major reason? I'd say it's at least 85%. So it has nothing to do. So he just made all that up or he just hyped everything up. So I'm trying to understand what you think his process was on this situation. I'm not saying it's 100%. Oh, I'm in Buffalo. I'm going to leave now. I'm sure that the situation there took a strain on his mental like being and all that but i, I just uh, i think if 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 it's not buffalo then this doesn't happen or if it's not if that if the whole 10 game winning streak isn't followed up by what by a normal buffalo safety season then this doesn't happen but during their 10 game winning streak was he not on the fourth line was he not performing well like he was not performing well then that's on him. Right. And that's. You can't tell me also that it's it's not unique. That it's the second player in three years to say that he's lost his passion there. But he. Yeah. I'm not arguing that Buffalo doesn't play a factor in it. It's obvious that Buffalo played a factor in it because they were on the 20, 20 team trade list. But going back to July 2nd, the fact that they, he was traded to a team he didn't want to be traded to, play it could have been any of those 20 teams. And a similar situation would have unfolded. 